Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky. Christmas week with another powerful point to ponder as we spend daily meaningful moments with the master. Thank you so very much for joining us during this week of weeks, the week in which we celebrate Christ coming into the world. God's peace and blessings be upon you. This entire week, our focus is going to be on Christmas on the most monumental day, not only of the church's calendar, but of the calendar of the world, because nothing is more monumental, nothing more globally celebrated like the coming of Christ into the world. Now, of course, when we think of Christmas, we think of the commercial side of Christmas, the fact that uh, retailers in most instances sometimes uh, make 33% of their uh, profits between Thanksgiving and the end of uh, the Christmas week. But when you think of it, it's more than just the commercial side. It's the historical significance of Christmas when you, when you stop to think about it. I mean, after all, the coming of Christ literally split history in half, BC, AD, BC before Christ, A.D. Anio Dominion, or after his reign, or after his rule. So significant is Christmas that we sign our checks and date everything based on the coming of Christ. For example, today is December the 21st, 2020. 2020, 2020 years from what pivotal event? 2020 years from the coming of Christ. So we, our birthdays, whatever day you were born, I was born in 1958, 1958 from what? 1,958 years. Christmas indeed is a monumental event. But for many people, Christmas is not something to be enjoyed. Christmas is something to be endured. Many people during Christmas season uh, have um, low moods, a lack of energy. Um, there's a sense of sadness and grief. Part of this is because during Christmas time, we often think about people who used to be in our lives and now they've passed off the scene. This is really a great issue this Christmas in light of all of the deaths that have taken place because of COVID-19. And then also, because the days are short. Today, as I said, is December the 21st. Do you know what today is? The day is actually the beginning of the, of the winter solstice. The word solstice literally means stand still. And it's like the sun has stood still. And today will be the one day during the course of the entire year in which you will have more darkness than you will have sunlight. It happens every year, December the 21st. The summer solstice is June the 21st. And on June the 21st, you'll have more daylight than you do uh, darkness. But today, the solstice, the very environment, the very nature, there's more darkness than there is sunlight. And that's not only true in terms of the physical world, but that's true for many people when it comes to their emotions. It seems like if you compare, do you have more darkness in your life right now or more daylight in your, your life right now? Most of you, and many of you might say, it's really dark. And it seems like I've got more darkness in my life than I do light. One of the purposes of Christmas is to help bring light into your darkness. That is why uh, during Christmas, you have a lot of lights. The Christmas story talks about lights. The shepherds saw the sky lit up as the angels were singing. The wise men in the Gospel of Matthew saw a star that led them to the little town of Bethlehem. In fact, we don't know if Christ was actually born on December the 25th. We, we probably wasn't. But the reason the church decided to make December the 25th the official day when Christ was born so that it would correspond with the winter solstice it was the church's way of saying that regardless of how dark things are, Christ comes in our darkest moments. And regardless of how dark your situation may be this Christmas, I don't know what the darkness you're, you're having to endure may be, but I do know this. Christ comes 
in the darkness. Whenever it's dark, that's when Christ comes. And that is why John 12, 46, the gospel of John 12, 46 says, Jesus says, I am the light that has come into the world. So that all who believe in me won't stay any longer in the dark. And this entire week, I wanna share some thoughts with you about a Christmas light for your dark days. The light that Christ wants to give you in your darkest moments, in your darkest hours, that when you think about it and look at life from the perspective and through the lens of Christ, because there's always two ways to look at a problem, either through your lens or through God's lens. And I'm gonna give you what God is thinking about in your dark days so that you can have light. One of the great preachers of the past was a minister named Dr. Gardner Taylor, a prominent minister who pastored in New York City. When he was a young pastor, he was preaching out in the country, in his country church. I believe it was in Louisiana. And as he was preaching uh, back in those days, um, electricity was um, unpredictable. And on one occasion, while he was up preaching, a night service, while he was preaching, the lights went out and it was pitch dark in the church house. And no one knew, did, no one knew what to do except a wise old deacon in the church shouted out at the young preacher, Gardner Taylor, and said, Preacher, keep on preaching because we've learned to see Jesus in the dark. And when it gets dark in your life, there's Christmas light for your dark days. I hope you'll join us each day this week as we talk about some D words, each one of those Christmas lights that God wants to give us for our D dark days. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. And thank you that in spite of the fact today is a day in which there will be more darkness than there is light. You are the light of the world so that those who have you in their life do not have to live anymore in the darkness. So help us, oh God, to think again about what Christmas means and to be open to the insights you're going to give us, the light you will give us for our dark days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us again for another powerful point to ponder. And if you don't have a church home, everybody needs a church home. We invite you to contact us at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. We'd love to have you become a digital disciple, part of our cyber church community. Just contact us here. Email us at newstart, newstart at ssclive.org. God bless you real good. And until tomorrow, remember what our closing salutation always is. Stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. I'll see you tomorrow.